But I wanted to ask you, uh, this guy, I think maybe you guys had a mind meld. Seth Klarman has a letter that's been going around Davos uh, a little bit this morning, um, and it, it's, it sounds a lot like you. He says, uh, it can't be business as usual amid constant protests, riots, shutdowns, and escalating social tensions. You've talked a lot about social tensions. And he asks in the letter, social fr frictions remain a challenge for democracies around the world, and we wonder when investors might take more notice of this. Why do you think thus far investors seem to have tuned out all of this as noise? Well, investors buy uh, returns on stocks and so on. So uh, it hasn't yet become a factor in terms of creating any disruption. There's a certain time horizon, maybe a few months, nine months might be it. And so if you take corporate tax cuts, they make stocks worth more. Or if you have interest rates at such a low, low level that a return on investment of buying equities for those who own equities, I mean, the uh, people who own their companies and they have buybacks, that supports stock prices. So the mechanics of that, even populism of the right, capitalism and making profits is what motivates the stock market. It's not what motivates the whole economy. So you have to realize that you're buying an income stream. And so it's those factors that are most. So where the are drivers. we in the income stream? And I should tell you, Scott Minard was sitting where you were uh, in the last segment. Uh -huh. He thinks a recession is coming in 2020. Um, so there's a, there's a significant risk of a recession. A recession, you know, is it minus one? Right. Is it plus one? Okay, so let's not get technical about that too much. There's a high likelihood of a significant slowing in 2020. And so now let's put that in perspective, right? We're, so we're in the later stages of the cycle. We have had certain things that mean there's a hump in growth and then there's going to be globally a slow up. It's not just the United States, it's Europe and it's China and then when we and Japan. And we look at where we are in interest rates. So we are at almost zero. We have 300 basis points here. We have zero there, there. Those factors together with the income gap and the populism will lead to now the political election. We're going to start to enter the uh, election season. 23 For, already okay. here and this is week, some new candidates and, on the list. And so with that, we're going to now have a question about the rethinking of how we're operating. That wealth gap has brought about populism and with that we're going to have the political conflict. The implications of the political conflict for markets are very profound. So we're going to start to talk about that. For example, there's, is, is a 70 percent tax rate going to happen? Does that change how it, uh, we will behave with capital gains? Does that have an effect? So these factors, the, the combination, I think, the three big factors are the combination of the wealth gap and the politics as we come to it, the where we are in the later cycle and the inability of central banks to ease as much. That's the cauldron that will define 2019 and 2020, in my opinion.